Hello everybody. Today on the channel, I'm going to be doing something rather different. I am going to be doing my best impression of your average supercar obsessed car vloggers. We are doing a supercar collection today. Oh yes, going through the whole hog all the way down to VVS, the YouTuber's favourite. And it's a very special day for a number of reasons. Now this isn't actually a car for me, it's for my friend Anthony from the channel Sports and Touring. We've become quite good friends over the last few months, talking of course, as I'm sure you can imagine, about cars and various other things. He and his son Damani share a passion for anything petrol powered, and this is genuinely his first supercar. He is truly excited to pick it up, and he asked me to be part of that process. And that meant a few things. I went down with him to look at the car and talk with the VVS, who I have to say have been excellent, but a little more on that later. And he also wanted me to be there for the collection day to make it that little bit more special, to get that experience that he'd seen so many others on YouTube have, and to make it his very own. In less than 12 hours, I'm going to be heading over to Anthony's to pick him and his son up and taking them over to VVS. But I wanted to see if there was anything that I could do to make that day just that little bit more special. And luckily, my friends at Audi were more than happy to help. You see, Audi wanted Anthony and Damani to get their first supercar in style. So rather than being picked up in my little BMW 1 Series tomorrow, they're instead getting ferried over in this. And they genuinely have no idea about it. It's very kind of Audi because I asked them at absolute last minute whether we could do this, and they are more than happy to oblige. But as you may be able to tell, it's already starting to rain. I've got to get an early night because it's a very early start, and we're going to pick up the action in the morning. Morning James, how are you? Morning, very good. This is a very, very nice ride you've brought with you today. What happened? Uh, well, I was meant to have it next week and um, with what we were doing today, I asked Audi if I could have it a little bit longer than normal. Told them what we were doing with it, picking up your first supercar, and they didn't want to see you go and do that in a BMW 1 Series. <laughs> but I've also brought you just a small little something to look at, not leaving it with you unfortunately, just to give you a little bit of YouTube inspiration. Oh, okay. Oh, I know what this is. <laughs> Hang on, here we go. What is it? What is it? Oh, congratulations, oh, man. You can unbox that. Don't worry, unbox I've already it, unboxed it. So. Oh. This is exactly how they come. Make sure I do this properly. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Wicked. Wow, oh, congratulations. Look at that. congratulations. And in fact, when you get one, they give you a little bit. So basically, you can both have one when you hit 100k. Oh, so okay. if you're a member of the team, you wow. get it. Wow, look at that. JM on cars, 100k. Yeah. So I'm using this video as my 100k celebration as well. Oh. Awesome. <laughs> Man, how did it feel when it arrived? Yeah, really surreal actually, because like, I waited for it like two months after I actually hit 100k. Yeah. And then I got bored and emailed them. and. Then they're like, oh, you are 100k, aren't you? Like, yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I guess you have a pack then. Thank you. And yeah, it sat at home for two days before I even opened it. And I was like, yeah, it's nice. That's awesome, man. I don't know where I'm going to put it, but... Four years of hard work. Yes. That has to hang behind where you do your live streams. Yeah, that's where everyone else puts theirs, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it's got to go there. I don't want to move the princess, though. So, we're heading down to VVS now. And gentlemen, what do you think of your taxi? Taxi? This is more than a taxi, my friend. And if this was a taxi, um, yeah, this is definitely the uh, executive package. It's pretty impressive. I have to say, I wasn't expecting it when you rocked up in this. It's stunning colour, but the thing that really blew me away was what Damani noticed was the brakes. Yeah, the brakes are massive. Like, as soon as I stepped out of the front disc, like take up the whole of the, <laughs> of the front wheel, it's wicked. So, okay, so let's talk a little bit. Let's just drop a few little hints about what it is that we're, we're going to get up. So, I mean, because mm -hmm. the car, and this is an interesting thing, because I often talk on the channel about, um, you know, what is a supercar? Because I was watching Car Trek 2 the other day with Tavarish um, and uh, Hoovy and, and Ed, and they did a thing where they got three supercars, and they got an old Aston Vanquish, a Maserati a 4200, and a Merc CL65. And I was sat there raging, going, none of those are supercars, <laughs> none, none of them are supercars. I mean, like, so, a lot of people would say, like, oh, because, you know, something's got not so much power, that that doesn't make it a supercar, but what we're picking up for you today has got less power than this. But would you say this is a supercar? I would have. I think there's a difference between supercar performance and a supercar. Yeah. Um, now, and, and this car we're picking up today, now it wasn't a dream car for you, but it was a dream car for you, wasn't it? Yeah, wasn't it? yeah, it was a dream car for me, so 
when this car came out, it was like just like, mind blowing to me. I thought it was one of the most beautiful cars out there at the time. Uh, this was like, I'm pretty sure it was my um, computer desktop screen for quite a few years as well. Like this is one of my dream cars. And uh, when Dad and I were looking at cars, we were kind of just scrolling through Auto Trader, and then I saw this car pop up, and I was like, wow, no way. He showed it to him, and he fell in love instantly. And I'll be honest, it's not a car that I have like craved necessarily mm. but there was one time I saw a particular version of it in a particular colour driving through central London and I said to myself wow that is stunning if, if I was ever going to get one of these it would look like that and this car does look like that and I, I actually it's like one of those cars that was never a dream car until I saw it and then I had to have it yeah so what were your criteria? Because I know we actually discussed this a couple of months ago and you didn't know you were going to get even this particular model of car or brand of car. No. Um, you, weren't, you, you weren't too set on anything. Um, but what were the criteria that you had for choosing your first supercar? Well, first of all, it had to be a, a real supercar. It had to be rear mid-mounted engine. Uh, I didn't mind whether it was naturally aspirated or turbos. Um, but most of all, it had to be a car that made me feel like a million dollars if you know what I mean mm -hmm. but it had to be a car that was very sporty like you know how certain cars they go for more comfort others are a bit more sort of track oriented yep. I wanted a road car with a little bit of a track orientation to it because you know me I like my bucket seats and you know all of these luxury here is nice but when I'm driving a car I want to feel connected to it so it was quite important to me that it was, was a very very sort of mildly leaning towards the track orientation without it being unusable on the road. I think it's met those criteria. I think so. It's a, it's a particular car that I've known for a little while and I have driven and I wouldn't recommend it to many people, but I knew that you would like it. <laughs> We're now here at VVS and stood next to me is Anthony's wonderful new purchase. But in YouTube tradition, we have to drag things out just a little bit further. Now, if a tree falls in the woods and there's nobody there to hear it, does it really make a sound? And likewise, if a YouTuber comes to VVS and doesn't tell you about a whole bunch of cars they want you to think they're going to buy, but in fact never are, did it really even happen? So. Let's have a look at a couple of the very nice vehicles they've got in the showroom yeah. right now. I wake up, flex, thumb down that check, no drip this, what? tell them run it up, no sleep, no rest, might crash, might wreck, but first die, stretch, tell them run it up. I wake up, flex, thumb down that check, no drip this, what? tell them run it up. No sleep, no rest. Might crash, might wreck. But first, die. Stretch. Tell them, run it. Now that the tan through my hands, I'm by my lonely. Turn to a savage, now my baby wants to. Now, for most people, VVS are always going to be the Lambo guys, but that's not the only thing that they sell. For example, they have this amazing Rosso Corsa Ferrari 360 Challenge Stradale, and it's in a very unusual specification because on the inside, rather than the regular Alcantara, this one actually has black and red leather, which is exactly how I'd probably have a car just like this. Unfortunately, I don't have the required 205,000 pounds to put one of these on the driveway just yet. And one thing I do really love about this showroom is the amazing variety of colors. Lamborghini buyers don't get everything in gray, it would appear. And these two hurricanes really demonstrate just how I'd probably specify a car like this if I were to ever own one. This green and this yellow will be a very tough decision to make. I've not actually driven a Hurricane myself. I'd love to have a go at one, so if anyone has got one, they're happy for me to have a go in. I'd love to hear from you, but um, the looks of them are growing on me. These early cars, not so much, but the Hurricane Evo, I think, is actually a genuinely really good looking car. Now this really is a bit of me. Now you might not have seen the video yet, but I have recently had the pleasure of sampling a Lamborghini Murcielago SV. And I've got to say, it was far more of a driver's car than I really expected it to be. Sadly, prices for these have gone sky high. And in all honesty, I can totally understand why. They're pretty rare, they're pretty fast, they're very loud, and they are actually incredible to drive. 
It's compromised. In fact, I struggle to fit in at five foot 10, but it's an absolutely masterful machine. I want one of these one day. I know for many, the ultimate Lamborghini is probably going to be a Countach, perhaps a Miura, or even for the newer generation, an Aventador SVJ. But for me, the need for speed generation, the original need for speed generation, it's got to be a Diablo. Now, I wouldn't have something like this six liter VT, which is one of the first cars really to see the influence from Audi on Lamborghini. No, I'd have to go with an earlier car, a rear wheel drive, something like an SV, something really properly outlandish, a genuine thoroughbred old school supercar. But enough window shopping. Let's show you what it is that Anthony is going home in today. It's this, a 2012 Audi R8 GT Spider. 560 horses, 10 cylinders, eight and a half thousand RPM of purebred German supercar goodness. Now, a lot of people might see this as the poor relation to the Gallardo, but I can tell you with some authority, this is actually the much better buy. And it being the GT, it has of course quite a lot going for it over a regular R8. It's a little bit lighter, it's a little bit more hardcore. This is a very special thing indeed. Beyond all the usual goodies you get with the GT, this one has had all of the carbon boxes ticked and even a couple of little extra bits of Alcantara put in it by some of its previous owners. Still blown away by it. I still kind of have to pinch myself. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> uh, I'm gonna say this because you're too humble to say this to the camera, but I'm so proud of my dad for working so hard his whole life to be able to be in a position to own a car like this. It's not obviously public knowledge, but my dad has come from literally starting from nothing. There's one point where he was homeless, living out of friends and family's sofas and struggling to have a place to eat, money to eat, money to live. Uh, but he never stopped, never gave up, worked his whole life, worked hard every single day. I've been there to see it for the 21 years I've been there with him. He built his companies up, built everything up to the point now that he's driving a freaking supercar. And I just want to say I'm so proud of him. And I love you, Dad. I love you too. All right, stop it, I'm gonna cry. So that's it from me here at VVS here today. I hope you've enjoyed my take on the typical supercar vlogger style video. I've had an amazing time. The guys at VVS are really good, really friendly, very enthusiastic. And most importantly, I've seen a good friend get a car he's really wanted and been able to share that experience with his son. This is something that doesn't happen anywhere near enough. It's actually been somewhat more emotional than I thought it might have been and I'm so glad to have been invited to be a little part of that. Thanks to all of you for getting me to the 100K mark. Maybe one day I will come down here to collect a car of my own, but for now, thanks for watching. You will see Anthony, Damani, and the R8 GT again on the channel as soon as I can. For now, bye-bye.